नमस्कार आई एम दर्पण आनंद एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग चंडीगढ़ यूनिवर्सिटी चंडीगढ़ टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ माय लेक्चर इज ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू साइबर लॉ एंड आईटी एक्ट इन इंडिया द आउटलाइन ऑफ दिस लेक्चर इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू साइबर लॉ नीड ऑफ साइबर लॉस साइबर लॉ इन इंडिया इंक्लूडिंग द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द साइबर लॉ साइबर क्राइम वट आर द कैटेगरीज ऑफ साइबर लॉ important definitions listed in the it act various sections of it act 2000 and amendment 2008 so here you have seen asocham stated one observation about the cyber crime is that india has witnessed a 457% rise in cyber crime incidents under the information technology act 2000 from the year 2011 to 2016 it means it's a very huge number of cyber crimes uh, listed by the nascom india is becoming vulnerable in digital world due to the combination of digital illiteracy and immaturity this graph shows that the cyber crime reported in india is the 3% of worldwide whereas the united states of america is affected 23% of cyber crimes listed in the world it means that india is also in the category of affected countries in the digitization especially in cyber crimes so therefore increasing diverse barrage of cyber attacks also exist in india another observation is that 3% of total systems across the world is controlled by the criminals and these criminals are very smart and these are the cyber criminals now what is the cyber law basically cyber law is the law governing the cyber space now the question arises that what is the cyber space so the cyber space is the environment for communication over computer network within a nation boundary it means that within a nation boundary whatever the field whatever the thing which is used over the computer network then it comes under the cyber space of that particular nation it includes computers networks softwares storage devices like hard disk usb device the intranet website emails atm cell phones etc so the whole things are covered by the cyber space introduction of the cyber is an idea a person thing can be described with prefix cyber if involved in digital world as a part of computer and information age so from there the cyber word comes out so the word cyber is derived from the greek word cybernets which means steersman or governor so the cyber is the word which is used for the govern something so this word is first introduced by norbert wenner this is the today's definition and today's existence of the cyber space is the cyber space is the virtual world which is existing over the internet cyber laws are the laws to governing this area so to govern the cyber space to apply the laws to apply the legislation over the cyber space we require some laws and these laws are called as cyber laws so cyber law is a branch of law dealing the legal issues concerned with information technology and cyber space and to governing the computers and the internet so why we need the cyber law so due to the more digital sophistication there is a crime for understanding the need of cyber law we have to know the objective of internet the internet is invented initially with the objective is a tool for information sharing and research so this is the primary objective of the internet but now we are using the internet on not only for exchanging and sharing the information not only for the research but also for e governance e business e commerce and e procurement and other various applications of internet are also existing in the field therefore the cyber law are dealing with all legal issues related to the internet crime it means that all the crimes existing over the internet is dealt with the cyber law 
almost all the cyber users are affected by cyber law in today's highly digitized world by various means some of the examples are transactions transaction means we are dealing with the financial transactions using net banking using credit cards using debit cards using atms etc so in transaction what happen we are dealing or we are simply providing our information to the bank using the internet because of the computer network and internet it may be possible that the cyber attack can attack and simply steal some information for their own purpose so it is the cause of cyber attack so we require the cyber law in this particular situation another is e governance in e governance government provide the platform for its various services so that user can access these services using the internet so because internet exists so there is a possibility of cyber attack so we require the cyber law another is computer network we are using ip camera we are using various devices which are connected through the computer network and this computer network also connected with the network from network which is the internet so there is a possibility of cyber attack so we require the cyber law various valuable data in electronic form we are using these day these all are the fields where the cyber law required we require the cyber law for credit cards for emails we are using the income tax return using internet so we require the cyber law here we are using cell phones sms messages online banking online share trading there are frauds due to the online share trading so these are some fields where cyber laws required this is a data to endorse the cyber law this is the ncrb data in 2014 9622 cases were registered under the it act in 2015 the numbers increased and it is about 11592 total cases are listed under the it act and in 2016 the cases is increased the figure is 12317 it means that day by day cyber crimes are increasing and the listing or registration of the cyber crimes um, under the it act is increased and it will be reflected by the ncrb data now go to the next so we need the cyber law to development of the department about cyber forensic because in various cases we require the forensic in especially for the cyber field so to develop the department for that another is the training of the users and therefore develop infrastructure for it so we have to train the cyber users about to prevent from the cyber attack another need is establishment of forensic labs enforce judiciary on the methodology and procedures about the digital evidences the training academy of cbi that is the central bureau of investigation should be established a training lab for cyber forensic it means that government should work in the field of cyber law so this is the need of current era in because of the digitization because of the increase in the cyber space so we require the cyber law here there are some agencies are established by the government for the basic and advanced training for the cyber laws these are cert in indian computer emergency response team cdac center for development of advanced computing dsci data security council of india and the nascam these all are the bodies agencies which are deal with the cyber law now the cyber law in india the it act is the second law in the india governing the field of it in 2000 why because the first one was in the year of 1885 in which the indian telegraph act is proposed and forced the first recorded cyber crime incident is believed to be recorded in the year of 1820 means before the indian telegraph act 1885 in 1820 the first cyber crime is recorded now why cyber law in india so 
the cyber space is a completely different sphere of the human existence no regards for any government on territory it means that there is no physically existence of the cyber space so everyone can feel that he can do anything in the cyber space but it will impact not only a person by any physical mean but also by psychology mean it will affect the society it will affect the government too so to regard this field we required some law to facilitate international norms because internet is working beyond the boundaries of any nation so to facilitate the international law we require the cyber law in india cyber law need to be specific it means that we have to define each and every word each and every term which is used in the cyber space so we required a law to simply define a particular terms which are using in the cyber space so conventional law will muddled up the cyber law structure it means that it's not sufficient the conventional laws are now sufficient for to deal in the cyber space so we required the cyber law in india now how the cyber law work what is the cycle for the cyber law law practice is the initial thing what happened we got some cases of the cyber attack how do we deal with those cases so we required the cyber forensic and another tools to simply investigate those particular cases then we required some cyber security and it experts to deal or to investigate these particular cases then we required some evidences and investigation to forward these cases to the result so we required the cyber law now to simply proceed the case under the trial of the nations act or nations law we required the cyber law now these evidences and investigation will be accepted by the nations law then we can punish the cyber criminal so this is a particular cycle for the cyber law history of cyber law in india the motivation for the cyber law in india is model law of electronic commerce which is adopted by the model law on electronic commerce on international trade law on 30th january 1997 by general assembly of united nation as a resolution united nation is a agency as we all know that which deal with the beneficiary of the common man so in 1997 un proposed uh, electronic commerce on international trade law this is the motivation for the indian government to propose the it act so the outcome of the above resolution is information technology act and the un recommended for its member states in july 1998 the department of electronics of india drafted the bill and we have it act 2000 and the it act amendment 2008 so these are basically two laws which existing in our law book now cyber law in india also added by many other acts because existing laws in say for example ipc is for the punishment and another law like evidence act the code for criminal procedure and many other laws are existing in india but because the mode of operations the mode of evidences the mode of investigation is changed therefore cyber law have to added for these all existing acts and statutes now to understand the cyber law first we have to understand what is the cyber crime and how can we categorize this cyber crime so classification of cyber crimes are basically cyber crimes are distinguished in three basic categories number one is crimes against person or individual crimes against property crimes against state or society so crimes against person or individuals means the cyber crime cyber crime means the crime in the internet so cyber crimes against the person or individuals includes harassment via email if someone doing harassment using the email it comes under this category and second is cyber stalking third is 
dissemination of obscene material if someone forced to see a particular obscene material so it comes under the crimes against person or individual defamation um, if someone simply spreading a message in cyberspace to defame someone so it comes under the, this particular category unauthorized control access over computer system if someone simply try to access the systems of others then it comes under this particular category another is incident exposure and internet time theft for example i have my internet connection from one, from one isp if someone simply stealing this time it comes under this particular category of cyber crime another is email spoofing email spoofing means if someone is send a, an email to other but using the email id of other person so it is a email spoofing it's also a crime pornography which includes child pornography so these are cyber crimes comes under the cyber crime against a person or an individual second category is crimes against property so computer vandalism second is virus transmission there is another cyber crime is virus transmission it means we are simply affecting others computer using the virus it's or it comes under this particular category of cyber crime denial of service attacks denial of service attack means we are simply sending a number of requests to a particular system or particular server in such a way that the server is unable to do further processing or unable to serve the genuine or legitimate requests so it's called the dos attack or denial of service attack so this particular crime comes under the crimes against property another is unauthorized access over computer system if someone is simply try to access remotely a particular system or server it also comes under this particular category intellectual property crime intellectual property crime means uh, suppose i simply propose one idea and someone is simply steal this idea so it is the intellectual property crime another is financial scams and frauds if someone simply try to access the pin of your atm or other information of your credit card and try to transactions using that particular information so it comes under this category sale of illegal articles suppose someone is saying that buy this product and it this product will benefit to a customer by some means but if that not possible of that not exist so it is the sale of illegal articles another sale of illegal article means we are simply selling the drugs the guns etc which are not legal so it comes under the sale of illegal article another is hacking so hacking means unauthorized access of any system so it comes under this particular field particular category crimes against property now other category is crimes against state or society so the first is intention to extract secret information from computer system for example if someone try to access the very secret data or what the say very secret information of government or a university so it comes under this particular category cyber terrorism simply enforce the ideology of terrorism using the cyber space it comes under this particular category distribution of private material it means that i have my private information if someone simply is spreading this private information to uh, cyber space so it comes under this particular category polluting youth through indecent exposure illegal human trafficking online uh, we also we, i think we all are aware about this particular crime uh, someone is simply sending a person to canada or abroad but illegally using the cyber space so it comes under this particular category sale of illegal articles online gambling because gambling is not legal in our country in our nation so it also comes under this particular category unauthorized control over computer system if someone is try and do the control over a system or over a server uh, but in an authorized manner so it comes under this particular category of cyber crime so these are 
the cyber crime categories and i think we all are simply aware about uh, these categories or we are simply reading some news some crimes in the newspaper or in a television about these particular categories of cyber crime now the next is types of cyber law in india it means how many type or how many categories of cyber laws are existing in our it act so the it act 2000 can be categorized in three basic parts number one is administrative two civil issues three criminal and penal so the administrative part of the it act 2000 it stands for recognizing e-commerce e-commerce means if someone is providing the services using the cyberspace so it comes under the e-commerce e-governance is also a uh, type of e-commerce application legal enforceability and authentication of electronic document so the administrative part also deal with this particular field methodology and processes methodology and processes which are implemented over the cyberspace to facilitate the user if someone is affect these methodology and processes it comes under the administrative part of the it act a special adjudicating officer and cyber law appellate tribunal also be established under this particular administration uh, administrative law category so their role and duties therein so in the administrative part of the it act they are enforcing some authority which deal with the it act and also provide the methodology and processes provide the sim simply legal enforceability and authentication of electronic document process and also recognizing the e-commerce so the next part is the civil aspects in civil aspects it act elaborate the runs parallel to administrative venture of the it act it means that the civil issue part part or civil aspect of the it act running parallel to the administrative venture of the it act it describes what constitutes civil infringement of the right through this part of the it act it will be proved that which is uh, legal or which is illegal for a person it prescribes civil duties of a person or a group of person next part is criminal and the penal so criminal part of the it act is recognizes and provides for Channel measures against crime in cyberspace, uh, digital crimes or crime against computer resource, related issues to redress, monitor, restrict, investigate cyber crime is also provided herein. It means that how do authority is go forward or proceed to investigation? So it comes under the criminal part of the IT Act. IT Act 2000 recognizes the cardinal philosophy of cyber disputes and what is it? So it describes computer can be abused and computer are weapons as well as victims because in cyber crimes the nodes are computers and these nodes are connected with the internet. So computers can be abused and computers were, are weapon as well as victim. So the term computer has wide amplitude in view of the IT Act. So what is the computer? It is defined in section 2 of the Act as computer means any electronic, magnetic, optical or other high speed data processing device or system which performs logical, arithmetic and memory function by manipulation of electronic, magnetic or optical impulses and includes all input output processing storage computer software or communication facilities which are connected or related to the computer in computer system or computer network is computer it means that this definition simply covered all the devices all the technologies all the software all the hardware all the storage devices whatever we are simply assuming comes under the computer 
Now the second definition is computer network. What is computer network in context of the IT Act? So computer network is the connection between single or multiple computers through the use of communication media using terrestrial lines, microwave, satellite, etc. It means two or more computers can be connected by any mean. So that connection established by the computer network. A terminal consisting of various, various, one or more mutually connected computers, whether the interconnection is continuously maintained or not, it's called the terminal. So it means that computer network is connection of single or multiple terminals and terminals are any computer system which is interconnected continuously or non-continuously but it comes under the computer network. Now another definition, computer resource. Computer resource means computer, computer system, computer network, data, computer database or software. Computer system. Computer system means a device or collection of devices including input and output support devices but not including calculators which are not programmable and capable of being used in conjunction with external files which contains computer programs, electronic instructions, input data or output data that performs logic, arithmetic, data storage and retrieval communication control and other functions. It means calculators are not computer system according to the IT Act because it is not programmable. 2008 IT amendment also comes in the picture and some more definitions are also described in IT Act 2008. So the new amendment also defines cyber cafe, electronic signature, communication devices, cyber security and Indian cert. Cyber cafe. The definition of cyber cafe is any facility from where access to the internet is afforded by any person in the ordinary course of business to the member of the public. It means any public place is providing the facility to access the internet. So it comes under the cyber cafe. It described in section 2 of 1 NA of IT Act 2000. Cyber security. So what is the cyber security? Protecting information, equipment, devices, computer, computer resource, communication device and information stored therein from unauthorized access use, disclosure, disruption, modification or destruction is cyber security. It means if we are providing the security to our systems from these unauthorized access or disclosure or disruption, modification or destruction is called the cyber security. Data, a representation of information, knowledge, facts, concepts or instructions which are being prepared or have been prepared in a formalized manner and is intended to be processed is being processed or has been processed in a computer system or computer network and may be in any form including computer printouts, magnetic or optical storage media, punched cards, punched tapes etc. or storage internally in the memory of the computer is called the data. Digital signatures, it is very important for non-reputation and also authentication. So what is digital signature according to IT Act? Authentication of any electronic record by a subscriber by means of an electronic method or procedure in accordance with the provision of section 3 of IT Act 2000. What is electronic form? With reference to information means any information generated, sent, received or stored in media, magnetic, optical computer memory microfilm, computer generated microfiche or similar devices is electronic form. Electronic record, 
it described in section 21t of ITA 2000. It means data record or data generated, image or sound stored, received or sent in the electronic form or microfilm or computer generated microfiche is electronic record. Key pair. It is very important to understand what is the key pair according to the IT Act because for the digital signature or for the security purpose, we require the key pair. So, according to the IT Act 2000, section 21 10th, which describes the key pair, is an asymmetric crypto system means a private key and its mathematically related public key, which are so related that the public key can verify a digital signature created by the private key. So, key pair consisting two keys, one is private key and another is public key. In digital signature, private key is used to simply generate a code which is called as a digital signature, but on the other end, public key is used to validate or verify that particular code such that the code is generated by a legitimate user or not. Originator, a person who sends, generates, stores, or transmits any electronic message or causes any electronic message to be sent, generated, stored or transmitted to any other person but does not include an intermediary is called the originator. So it this definition is described in section 21 ZA of ITA 2000. There are two other definitions very important private key and public key. So, what is private key? According to the IT Act 2000, section 21 ZC, private key means the key of a key pair used to create a digital signature. And what is the public key? According to the section 21 ZD of the IT 2000, public key means the key of a key pair used to verify a digital signature and listed in the digital signature certificate. Secure system. According to the section 21ZE of the ITA 2000, secure system can be described as computer hardware, software and procedures such that these are reasonably secure from unauthorized access and misuse. These provide a reasonable level of reliability and correct operation. These are reasonably suited to performing the intended functions and adhere to generally accepted security procedures or secure system. So, according to this act, we can define the secure system and anyone can certify the system is secure or not according to this particular act. Now, we go further for some sections of the IT Act. Section 4, legal recognition of electronic records. So, this section provides the legitimacy of the electronic records. So, according to this section, if any information is required in printed or written form under any law, the information provided in electronic form which is accessible so as to be usable for subsequent use shall be deemed to satisfy the requirement of presenting the document in writing or printed form. So, a general provision of recognizing electronic documents comes under this section. Another sections related to the e-governance are 5, 6, 7, 9 and 10. Section 5 describes legal recognition of electronic signature. Means, what is legal, uh, electronic signature and how do electronic signature recognize legally comes under the section 5. Section 6 it describes use of electronic records and signatures in government and its agencies. So, this section enforces government and its agencies to use electronic records and elect digital signatures. Section 7 and 7a describes retention of electronic records and audits. Section 8 describes publications of rules and regulations in the e-gazettes. Therefore, you all are aware that e-gadgets are comes under the picture and we all get the e-gadgets using the government site. Section 9 describes no right to claim and insist on electronic documents. Section 10 describes central government retains the power 
to make rules with respect to electronic signatures type manner format and processes whatever used to establish or develop the electronic signature so this autonomy is given to the central government under the section 10 section 11 and 12 describes receipt and acknowledgement of the digital documents section 11 discuss about the attributor that is sender of electronic record or by a person authorized by any other or by an auto response duly programmed on behalf of the other is recipient or sender section 12 describes receipt for acknowledgement where nothing has been stipulated so any communication from addresses automated or otherwise any conduct of the address that proves sufficiently however conditions may be imposed by the attributor via an email footer and statement therein it means that if someone is sending the electronic document so the other party should provide the receipt or acknowledgement of that particular document other important sections are section 16 central government to prescribe security procedures and it will be changed uh, according to the technology change it comes under the section 16 section 17 to 34 it deals with the appointment and regulation of controller and certify authority so we required a number of certified authorities and number of controllers to simply regulate the cyber law so the appointment of these authorities are comes under section 1734 section 35 to 39 describes obtaining digital signature certificates so how a person how a society how government obtaining digital signatures and how, so these all processes and methods are described in the section 35 to 39 section 40 to 42 it describes the duties of subscriber of dsc exercise due care to retain the private key now administrative character can be described under in the section 44 it describes the penalty for failure to furnish information and return etc appointment and function of educating officer described in section 44 powers and functioning of the cyber law appellates tribunal is also comes under the section 44 Section 61 describes civil court excluded from jurisdiction. Section 46 and 21C describe educating officer. Who should be the edu educating officer? What is the functioning? What is the work? What is the authority of educating officer is described in this particular section? Offense in gist. Section 43 describes the simple civil provision now a civil and many amount to a penal offenses under section 66 if a fraudulent or dishonest means is established so it relates to access to computer without the permission of the computer owner it penalizes any sort of unauthorized access or assistance very interesting thing is that we all are once trying to access the computer system or phone of our friend but without the permission of our friend so it is the unauthorized access so it comes under section 43 and it is punishable offense under the it act section 43 in a nutshell can be described as whoever without permission of owner of the computer secures disrupts access of computer digital resources or network comes under the section 43 downloads copies extracts any data unauthorizedly from the other computer comes under this particular section introduces or causes to be introduced any virus or contaminant also comes in section 43 damages or causes to be damaged any computer resource destroy alter delete add modify or rearrange change the format of a file disrupts or cause disruption of any computer resource preventing normal 
continuance of computer so these are comes under the section 43 now section 43 a is about the failure to protect data if someone is claiming to protect the data but it fails then it the offense is comes under the 43 a so 43 is very important to understand we have to learn about the 43 so without any permission of a computer owner we do not try to access that particular system and this is not a computer system this is also mobile whatever it is but the computer system according to the it act some other important points about the it act section 65 section 65 describes the offense about tampering with computer source documents and the punishment is imprisonment up to 3 years or fine up to rupees 2 lakh or both so this is a punishable task section 66 penalizes any contravention under section 43 if carried out with a fraudulent or dishonest motive then it comes under section 66 and the punishment should be imprisonment up to 3 years or fine up to rupees 5 lakh or both based on the severity of the fraudulent section 66a punishment for sending offensive message through communication services like internet or messaging or whatsapp whatever it is so it comes under the section 66a offensive or menacing or false or for the purpose of annoyance inconvenience ill will etc comes under the section 66a so the punishment of this section is up to three years and with fine section 66b punishment for dishonesty receiving stolen computer resources etc if someone simply receiving the data which is stolen by another it comes under the section 66b section 66c punishes identity theft password or other pass phrases unique identification or authentication credentials it comes under the section 66c section 66d defines punishes personating by means of computer resources section 66e describes punishes violation of privacy rights and section 66f describes punishes cyber terrorism so these are very important sections we all are aware about these sections now other section is 67a punishment for publishing or transmitting of material containing sexually explicit act pornography etc in the electronic form is comes under the section 67a punishment is first conviction any person do this uh, first time the imprisonment up to 5 years and fine up to rupees 10 lakhs but if it will repeat it then second conviction imprisonment up to 7 years and fine up to 10 lakhs is described in section 67a but some important things are exceptions for this 67a act as if someone using the same material for the art science literature or other other interests of learning and other cases these all are exempted from punishment section 67b punishment for publishing or transmitting of material depicting children in sexual explicit act in the electronic form if the same which is described in 66a is for the children then it comes under section 67b so the first time convicted people is punished with imprisonment up to 5 years and fine up to rupees 10 lakhs and for the second conviction imprisonment up to 7 years and fine up to 10 lakhs section 67c preservation and retention of information by intermediaries means if i am simply sending an information and my isp store that information so it's a punishable offense and the punishment should be 
imprisonment up to three years and with fine. Section 68. Provision and punishment for violation of order from the controller. If control control give one order and someone is violate that particular order, it comes under the section 68. Section 69 describes power of the government to issue direction for monitoring, intercepting or decrypting any information through any computer resource. Some other important subsections of section 69, 69A and 69B. 69A describes the power for blocking of public access. I think you all are listening to some news in uh, television or simply reading in newspaper about the blocking of internet access for a vulnerable areas like JNK and other other pawn areas. So those are under the section 69A where government has power to blocking the public access of internet or telephone services. Section 69B provides the power to the government to monitor and collect traffic, internet traffic or network traffic. So basically an administrative right of the government and provide for punishment to the violator, usually intermediaries who are in charge of some databases or are service providers. So now comes to another sections, section 71, penalty for misrepresentation before the controller or the certify authority. So the punishment is imprisonment up to two years or fine up to 1 lakh or both. Section 72 describes the penalty for breach of confidentiality and privacy. The provision applies to those persons who are empowered under this act uh, with such a database or record. So the punishment is imprisonment up to 2 years or fine up to 1 lakh or both. Section 72A, penalty for disclosure of information in breach of lawful contract. An amendment to include even the employees of private organizations or such intermediary working therein. So if someone is supposed not to disclose the information, if he will simply disclose the information, this offense is, comes under the section 72A. The punishment is imprisonment up to 3 years or fine up to 5 lakh or both based on the severity of the act. Section 74, publication of signature or signature certificates for fraudulent purpose. It comes under the section 74. So the punishment is imprisonment up to 2 years or fine up to 1 lakh or both. Section 76, it provides for confiscation of any related computer accessory, system, part, etc. If the someone is believed to be used in any violation of this act, or rules. Section 77B, offenses punishable with imprisonment up to three years to be bailable. Section 78 describes the power to investigate offenses now available to inspector. Earlier, the onus was on the DSP rank officer or above. It means that if someone is supposed to do investigation, then it comes under the section 78. Section 79, exemption of intermediaries and service providers if they establish that they have exercised due diligence on their part. So an abusive provision for the ISPs but often helpful. The 2009 notification makes it an offense to even abet or attempt a cyber crime. Earlier, unsuccessful criminal always escaped by virtue of this gray area uh, because in this particular situation the things are not clear. Section 84b punishment for abatement so same punishment as prescribed for the offense. Next is section 84c punishment for attempt a maximum of one half of the term of imprisonment provided for the offense or with fine as prescribed for the offense or with both comes under the section 84C. Section 90 provides the power to the state government to make allied rules. It means that in section 90, state governments under the federal structure of India has powers to make allied rules 
and regulations for the cyber space cyber law it act so it's up to the state government if they believe that they required more rules or more acts they can propose and pass those laws from the legislature channel i think you all are aware about the indian penal code in which there are various sections which are deal with the criminal laws so these criminal laws are also related with the cyber crimes so cyber laws and uh, cyber laws and ipc incorporated for these particular acts so what are these sending threatening messages by email it comes under the section 503 of ipc it's a criminal intimidation it means that you are simply threatening to other using the any electronic mail such as email comes under the section 503 another is sending defamatory message by email so if there if someone is simply spreading defamatory message uh, for a particular person through the email so it comes under the section 499 and 500 of ipc and this act or this offense uh, is entitled for the simple imprisonment which may extend to for the 2 years and or with the fine forging electronic records it means that someone is simply forged the records electronic records it comes under the section 463 470 471 of ipc it entitles for the simple imprisonment which may extend to for the 2 years and with the fine bogus websites or cyber frauds Uh, the phishing attack phishing attack means if suppose there is a particular bank website if uh, some attackers create that website which is very similar to the original one but it's a phishing it's a simply for the fraud purpose so the this particular type of cyber crimes under the section 420 of ipc so the maximum imprisonment is up to 7 years with or without fine email spoofing email spoofing means if we are simply supposed to mail someone using the email id of other is called the email spoofing so it comes under the section 416 417 463 of ipc and it entitled for the simple imprisonment which may extend to for the 2 years and or with the fine now other is online sale of drugs if someone simply provide drugs on website so it comes under the narcotic drug and psychotropic substances act ndps act so regress imprisonment 10 to 20 years fine rupees 1 lakh to 2 lakh regardless of the quantity so this is the punishment for this particular offense web jacking it means web extortion so it comes under the section 383 ipc and entitled for the imprisonment which may extend to for the 3 years and or with the fine if someone provide the sale of arms online it comes under the arms act and it can title for the imprisonment not less than 3 years which may extend to for the 7 years and with the fine so these are very important uh, uh, cyber law and it acts related with the ipc so the very important other part of the it act is evidence act because evidence is mandatory part for the legal proceeding so the major highlights of the evidence act in view of the it act 2000 is that it recognizes electronic evidence section 65 describes the most important provision dealing with the specific provision on digital evidence section 65b describes the provision to provides for a detailed process for the analysis of the digital evidence in question section 65b4 requires a certificate from the examiner of the digital evidence it means if someone simply claim the digital document so it should be examined by the examiner and it should be certified by that particular examiner which is governed by the government the government shall notify who is the gadget examiner for digital evidence under section 79a of the it act the same provision is exclusive 
it includes all other cyber forensic experts from entering this field under section 45 of the evidence act so the result and outcome of this lecture on it act and cyber crime is about how do we protect ourselves from the cyber crime so the results are keep altering the time clock no never we do not keep the pc infected with viruses and trojan horses we do not use modified kernels of the os someone simply use the phone which is called the modified phones so the kernels are updated so it's cause for the cyber crime use known applications and legitimate and certified application never use the unknown applications do not keep the pc in defective mode use hardware that is not difficult to find so these are some points to exercise in our working for the digital world and the most important is never try any trick which directly correlates with an attempt to destroy evidences so the very important phrase for the law is law is the last interpretation of the law given by the last judge thank you